Okay, we're back. Uh, we're going to do a session on the actual welding. I've kind of showed you all the parts that were in the kit. Uh, so first things first, we're gonna show you the belt. This is a 3 8 round orange 85 Eagle belt. So I have just a loop here. You have to understand that this would normally be wrapped around a conveyor or off separate if they have access to put it onto the conveyor without taking the conveyor apart. So this is already pre-cut, but I'm gonna show you a, just a real quick cut because there's some things to be careful of. One, don't pinch your hand, have it out toward the end. If you're in too close, you run the risk of pinching your hand in there, especially if you have big meaty hands. Two, you wanna make sure that your cut is extremely straight or as straight as you can possibly get it. So I'm laying that in there and I'm making sure that the belt is perpendicular to the blade. So we want a nice straight cut. I want it laying in the middle. I sweat. Huh? Yep. So just demonstrating that to just c demonstrate a nice square cut. Cause you want your ends to be square. If it's not square, will I still get a good weld? You can, but you have to compensate for it. Okay. So you don't want to have to compensate for it, and I'll show you how you compensate for it here shortly, but if you can avoid that, all the better. Save yourself some time and aggravation. Right. So I'm gonna lay that to the side here real quick. So again, we have our, our clamp. You see that this has a thumb screw on it. This thumb screw opens and closes the clamp. You can do it by hand as well. But there's a spring in here that pushes it aside. And that is what opens, holds it closed if you want it closed or holds it open. There's also a little spacer on here. The spacer is important for setting your initial spacing for welding your belt. So when you're starting your initial setup, you're gonna have your clamps free and open. You're going to slide your spacer in. That spacer is to stay in. And I'll tell you when that spacer comes out. So your spacer's in, that's how you, you start off. Now you take your thumb screw, thumb knob, and you're gonna close it up to the spacer. And that's what the instructions will tell you to do, is you close that up to that spacer so that you're squeezing that spacer. Now, for bigger belts where you want maybe a little more melt, or if your ends are not square, if you've cut them crooked, you wanna give yourself a little more melt space a little more room for that to come together as it's melting. So you can actually back that knob off a half a turn. I do that pretty much with anything with 3 eighths and up. I always back that off a half turn. It gives you a little extra room to bring that together to melt. So now your spacing is now set up. So now you can go ahead and get your belt put in. I'm gonna use this V right here for this 3 eighths belt. And I'm gonna put the belt in so that the end of the belt is directly centered in the gap between the two clamp sides. When I tighten this down, I wanna tighten it down evenly. If you look, there's a little bit of a gap right there and a little bit of a gap right there. You wanna keep them the same. You wanna keep that nice and even. If you have one side cranked way down real tight, it actually rolls the belt to that side. And, it, and if you screw it down too tight, it'll actually turn that belt into an oval. It'll actually uh, deform the belt. So we don't wanna be doing that. You can see I have that set right in the middle of the gap. So once that's tightened down, you're gonna bring your other piece in. Now, you'll notice how I have it down. These belts have a natural curve in them coming out of the box. They're kept in, coiled up in a box, they're gonna have a natural curve. You wanna match that curve when you tighten them together. Otherwise, you're gonna have a weird twist in your belt and we'd like to avoid that. What happens if we have a twist in the belt in the application? It can roll on the conveyor. Um, it also can make some noise going through the pulley if you don't get a nice even weld from it. You may not get an even weld if it's, if it's got a twist, but the big thing is it can actually roll and twist. And what happens to the product if that rolls and twists? It moves. It'll move side to side. So if you're trying to guide a product and you've got a belt that's rolling, it'll actually slide that product sideways. So if you're trying to get that product into a finite area, you may not hit that area. So it's very important to have your belts lined up correctly. With everything tightened down, you can see I have the belts touching each other in that gap, centered in that gap. At this point now, you can back your thumb screw off so that, that can open up. 
If you don't open that up, you can't get your blade in there to actually weld. So that putting that spacer in and closing that, that thumb screw up like that sets your initial spacing. Now you're ready to weld. This blade will get up to 480, 500 degrees roughly, right around there. Um, this material really, you only need to be up to about 440 degrees for it to actually start welding. So um, this, belt, this blade gets plenty hot enough. The, there is an art form to this. Um, it's, it's definitely subjective, it's human feel. Um, so there's a lot of room for error, unfortunately. But if you're, if you're careful and you have a light touch on it, you can get a good weld. So, leaving that spacer in, I'm going to put my blade in, and I'm going to put it perpendicular to the clamp. I want it nice, straight up and down. I don't want it angled like this or like that or twisted. I want it in there nice and straight, and I'm going to gently squeeze with my right hand on the clamp. I'm going to gently squeeze and hold that belt against the blade. Now, what happens is it pinches the blade, so it makes it a little like you can feel the, the resistance on the blade. Well, as that belt melts and softens up, it frees that blade up. So you're going to see me very, very slowly moving this blade. I can't stress that enough. Very slowly. We're not doing this, okay, because you're going to move the material out of the way. So what happens is when I feel that blade free up, then I know to squeeze a little more with my right hand. You don't want to squeeze it as hard as you possibly can because then what happens is you squeeze all your melted material out and then it's not going to stick together. You have what, what ends up as a, what's called a cold weld. So what I'm doing is I'm letting the melt rate dictate how quickly I bring my hand together, my right hand, and clamp that. So as I'm bringing this together, I feel that blade free up. And I know I can bring it together some more until the blade gets pinched a little bit. So I'm going to bring that all the way together until I close up on my spacer clamp. Now for this size belt, I'm going to give it just a few seconds of dwell time to just make sure I'm nice and melted. But it's also a visual, and I'm going to show you visually how I know it's done. So I know I'm melted enough. I'm going to pull the blade out, pull my spacer out, and just squeeze it all the way together. So my little catchphrase that I use when I'm training people for when to take that spacer out is blade out, spacer out. That's how you know when to take that spacer out. I'm going to set that down. This must sit in the clamp for three minutes to cool off. So make sure we clean the blade because as I discussed before, we want a nice clean blade. Now this is hot, so please be careful not to touch it. Again, use a cotton cloth. Make sure there isn't any decals on it or anything like that that will melt onto it and make it worse. Set that aside, let it cool. Unless you have more to do, then keep it plugged in. So as I said, we're going to leave this sit for three minutes. After we've left it sit in this clamp for three minutes, we're going to take it out, and then we're going to leave it sit for another 27 minutes. The idea is we need this stuff to have a half hour to cool. Reason being is if we don't give it a half hour to cool, it could still be warm in the middle, and then when you stretch that belt onto the pulleys, you're now, you now have a soft weld in there that's, that's stretching, and you're not going to get the integrity in the weld that you would like to have. Can I, can I pour cold water over it or blow compressed air at it to cool it down? Absolutely. Uh, and I was just about to say you can dunk it in a bucket. I've seen people take this whole clamp and dunk it in a bucket. Um, I've seen people dump cold water over it. I've seen people blow at it with an air hose. Anything you want to do to cool it off quicker is fine. Blowing at it with an air hose is fine. It does cool it off quicker, but it's, again, it's subjective. How much quicker does it work? Do you know that it's cooler in the middle? So when you do that, you're, you are kind of risking that you maybe didn't get it cooled off enough, but that is absolutely something that you can do for sure. Once it's been in for three minutes, we can go ahead and pull it out. Now, the reason that these are slotted to open up is, obviously, we have a solid loop now, so we need to open them up to take that out. If you can zoom in on the bead there, you can see that it's a nice rounded bead. That's how visually I knew it was done. What ends up happening a lot of times, and I've seen a lot of customer samples come into us when they say, hey, our, our weld is breaking, and I say, okay, well, send us a sample of your weld. I want to see what it looks like. That bead is just comes up to a point. So they see it start to melt. It's come up to a point, and they stop. 
it's not that's not enough yet. That's just the outside of the belt is getting hot and starting to peak up. It actually has to start rolling back on itself so you get this nice rounded bead. And that's how you know that it's done. So again, like I said, it's very subjective to human error. Uh, you know, visually, how you feel it, how you, you're squeezing it, how if you squeeze it too hard, again, you squeeze all the melted stuff out. Liken it to a cupcake. If you want to stick two cupcakes together, you stick them together by the icing. But if you push too hard, all the icing squeezes out. Now you're, you're cake to cake. They're not going to stick together. It's the same principle with this. So this bead is also called flash. That's what these snips are for. We're going to cut this out because if you're in a round pulley or even a V pulley and you're trying to run this belt through it, that flash is, could possibly make it jump out or at the very least it's going to make a heck of a noise when it goes through. So I've now snipped the flash off so to make a nice clean weld joint. Now inevitably you're going to get someone when you're doing the training uh, that's going to take this thing out of the clamp and you're going to snip it and you're going to pass it around for people to look at and they're going to immediately just squeeze it like that, right? And then if it's still pretty fresh out of the clamp and not totally cool, uh, cooled off, you're going to, you might get a little bit of a split there. So your response to that is one, it's still warm because we haven't waited a half hour. And two, what's the minimum pulley diameter of three eighths belt? It's three inches, which is closer to that. Right? We have a minimum pulley diameter on purpose because we don't want to be bending around tight radiuses. So for someone to, to pull it out and do that right away and then say, oh, your weld is breaking, it's not a realistic thing. So, And you will inevitably encounter that person because I do almost every time I do weld training. So now this is a non-reinforced belt. So we just did a, did a weld. If this was reinforced, meaning it had a polyester thread inside of it, we would have to drill that back a little bit to get it out of the way of the weld because what would happen is polyester melts at a much, much higher temperature. So when we're welding it, if we leave that polyester thread in there as the polyurethane outer coating melts away, that polyester is just gonna kind of ball up in there and make a big lump inside the weld. So one, you're gonna have a lump and two, it's going to be an extremely weak joint because the polyester doesn't bind together or bond together and you have less polyurethane material in there. So can I ask a question? Absolutely. You talk about weak joints. Mm -hmm. Is that joint, is that the weak part of that belt? Absolutely not. A properly welded belt, that, ten, that weld will hold the working load of the actual belt itself. You could put this in a tensile tester and pull it. It may not break at the weld. If this is a thermoplastic, which means you can melt it and weld it back together without changing its properties. So again, a properly welded belt, keyword properly welded, that so weld is as strong as the I belt. If I have a customer that calls in and keeps complaining that he, it's breaking at the weld all the time, mm -hmm. why, why would it break at the weld if the weld's as strong as the rest of the belt? Lots of factors. Again, it's a very human touch uh, and human error in the weld. So you hate telling the customer they're probably not welding it right, but 90% of the time, that's the problem. The other part, the other time is it could be going around too small of a pulley diameter. Uh, so it's breaking at the weld as well. So there, there's a lot of factors that go into that. Another thing too, when we're talking about heating it up to get a proper weld, your ambient conditions that you're in play a big part of it. So if you're outside in Alaska in a windstorm, this thing's probably not going to get hot enough. I mean, this this blade ends up being a big heat sink, so it's just gonna it's just gonna be too cool to really weld. So uh, we've run into that already, where someone's trying to weld inside of a freezer, and they're they're just not getting enough heat out of their blade to, to do a proper weld. Any other questions? No, I think so. I think you got everything. All right, good deal.